So yeah, um, as Mark said, thanks everyone for taking the time to um, join us in our webinar today. Um, so yeah, I'm Alyssa, I'm a technical evangelist uh, with the commercial software engineering team with Microsoft. Um, so my specialty is in chatbots and um, AI, so yep, hence I'm doing the chatbot topic today. Um, so I work with uh, enterprises and startups and partners on bringing their chatbots to life. Okay, so what is the Microsoft Bot Framework? So the Microsoft Bot Framework really gives you um, everything you need to build intelligent bots that connect across um, all sorts of different channels. So every developer's dream is to write once and run everywhere, right? So the Bot Framework um, really allows you to do this. Okay, so let's get started from the basics. So what is a bot? So a bot doesn't necessarily have to have like some sort of machine learning or natural language or voice behind it. It's, it's sort of merely something that tries to um, automate your tasks for you and um, really amplify the, amplify the intelligence that um, we have. So the bot framework has three main components. So I'll just uh, briefly touch on these and then um, go through some demos so that you guys can sort of get an idea of what bots can do and really get your creative juices flowing. So there's three main components to the bot framework. Uh, the first is Bot Builder SDKs. Um, so Bot Builder SDKs, we have a Node.js SDK, which is JavaScript based, and we have a .NET SDK as well. Um, these SDKs are open source and they really help you um, build bots by providing you with um, components that make it easier for you to do so. So what I mean by this is um, they provide you with ways to create forms easily or emulate um, form filling in the bot easily. They provide things like prompts. Um, so example, if you have a date prompt, then the bot will automatically do like date validation for you when you receive um, some sort of input from the user. Um, secondly, we have the bot connector part. So this is the part that lets you um, connect your same bot logic to many, many different channels. So there's Facebook Messenger, there's Skype, Slack, and other channels. Um, so what we do is register the bot through a dashboard, and I'll show you how to do this later. And then you can configure whatever channel you want your bot to be on. And lastly, um, the bot directory. So this is kind of like an app store for bots. Um, cool. So bot builder SDKs, I'll just touch on each of these um, three components. Uh, so as I said, you can use dialogues to model a conversation. Uh, let me just do a demo as to what that looks like. Um, so I'm just going to run this locally. Okay, so this chatbot is, um, it's a laundry bot. <laughs> Um, so let me say hello to it. Um, I'm a laundry bot and I help with your laundry needs. So this is just an example of um, what you can do with bots. Just an idea. So you can do things like, um, how should I separate my clothes? Uh, this uses natural language in the background to detect what the user is saying. So you can see, I recommend the following separation, jeans, colored clothes, white clothes, baby clothes, wool delicates. Um, so yeah, it uses natural language to detect what my intent was. And my intent was to find out how to separate my clothes. So what if I say, um, how sh should I, uh, So it detects um, the entity, which is cotton. Uh, so entities are kind of like data inside what the user said. So uh, this is a really important part of what I said. And the intent is, how should I wash something? So it gives me care instructions for cotton. So if I say something like, um, what about silk? OK, 
can instructions for silk. So it, it knows that the context um, is how to care for something or how to wash something. So all it needs is to know what kind of material. So it gives me care instructions for silk. You can also um, interact with the bot through buttons. So if I say yes, give me some detergent recommendations. It says for silk, I recommend these over here. Um, so let's say, um, what about denim? So it detects that the context is to recommend um, washing products for denim. All right, so let's go Y drift. Cool. So you can also press the button and the bot will give you more information or more detail on a specific product. Okay, so let me see if my weather is working. Uh, should I wash my clothes today? <laughs> okay. It basically does like a weather forecasting. So you can integrate a bot with um, any API that you want. A bot is basically just a web service in the background. So you can integrate it with, yeah, whatever API, including weather. So it says, oh, your clothes might take a while to dry today. Um, so what I've actually done here is you can do something creative like, um, where is the... Uh, Okay, so as you can see here, I've actually integrated it with um, this in the background. Uh, so I've integrated it with Facebook Messenger. And it works with all the buttons and stuff. Um, I've also done it with Skype, but I don't have Skype open, so... Okay, it might take a while to reply initially. But you can see that, yeah, I've integrated this... Um, with Facebook, which is pretty cool because everyone has Facebook, so it makes it really accessible and you don't have to download any app to access this bot. Um, I've also integrated this with um, this Power BI dashboard. What this lets you do is really um, look at the washes that you've done. Uh, so as you can see, it's even interactive. If I click on this, it automatically um, changes and tells me how much I consumed in the month of May, um, what's the estimated power usage, and let's say I look at the number of warm washers in November. So I spent 97 cents on warm washers in November. Of course, this is using dummy data, but you know, it's just an example of the possibilities that you could do. Let's try this heavy. So that's the distribution of heavy washers that I did over the year. Cool. Okay. Um, so going back to the slides. So if you aren't really well-versed in c -sharp or JavaScript, you can actually use any language because the bot connector has a REST API that you can use as well. So that makes it quite flexible. Okay, so the second main component is the bot connector. Uh, this connector actually helps to manage the state of your bot. So you need to manage the state for every user because um, everyone will be at different points of the conversation with the bot, but the connector actually helps you do all of this. And then um, there's all these different channels that you can connect to. So I'll just show you the dashboard. Uh, oh, okay, so let me just show you the language understanding model that went behind the laundry, uh, laundry bot. Oops. So this is the language understanding model. Um, it's a service called LUIS, L-U-I-S, stands for Language Understanding Intelligence Service. Uh, so these are all the different intents that I have. Um, so let's say, remember 
I had a how to care intent. So these are the different kinds of things that I trained the bot with. So how do you wash um, cotton? Uh, can I get a washing guide on material and type? Um, can I get washing instructions? And then let's say we go into another intent, which is a separation. So this intent was, uh, how do I split my clothes up? Uh, how do I separate my laundry? So you can see that it's really, really easy to do something like this. If I add an intent called um, maybe, uh, what should the intent be? Uh, check location. Then you can do something like where should I wash my clothes? I mean, this isn't realistic, but it's just an example of um, an intent that you could add. Okay, it's being a bit slow for some reason, but you get the idea. I mean, you can put like um, where to uh, go to wash laundry. Yeah, and then uh, once you do that, you can just train it and then it will be able to um, understand you based on what you trained it with. Cool, so that's a language understanding. And then um, just why is it signing in? Okay, just Okay, so this is the bot portal. Yep, so you can see all the bots that I've made here. Let's say Laundry Bot. Alright, so these are all the different um, channels that you can actually connect your bot with. So it's Bing, there's Cortana, there's um, Kick, there's Skype for Business, Slack. Um, so you can actually So you can actually manage all of that right from this portal, which makes it really easy. And you can even um, uh, integrate analytics into it. It's just loading, but we'll move on anyway. Okay, so what does all the bot architecture look from a high level? So this looks complicated, but it's not that bad, honestly. Um, so your bot code can all go in here. This is where your a uh, web service is going to live and then you can um, use the bot connector service which uh, I mentioned earlier helps you connect it to canvases, the different channels and then um, you can connect all sorts of intelligent APIs and services to your bot which means you can use things like the natural language understanding API you can use speech to text API you can use yeah, many different kinds, translation. And then all your databases and machine learning or search services can all connect to the bot as well. So let me give you a demo of a bot that uses um, a lot of different kinds of services. Oops. How do I get that out of the way? your address so as you can see it um, uses speech-to-text uh, recognition to understand what I said 
I need insurance. Uh, let's say automotive. So you can actually use any kind of identification that you want here. You can even integrate um, text verification or Facebook verification. Uh, so this actually pulls into um, Microsoft Dynamics 365 and it shows that um, it, it does a bit of upselling here. So I can see that your daughter just turned 17 year old. Should I include her? Okay, so this kind of dialogue is an example of form flow. Um, so for the bot easily. Okay, so now it's going to ask me for a photo. So let's try uploading a photo of a dog. Okay, so it actually uses computer vision in the background to detect that um, it's not actually a car. It looks more like a large brown dog lying on the ground. So let's try tricking it again and put a picture of Bill Gates. Okay, so it's doing like um, celebrity recognition and it can actually tell you who's the celebrity. So it looks more like Bill Gates wearing glasses smiling at the camera. Okay, let's finally upload the photo. So finally it detects that, yep. Um, <laughs> It detects that it doesn't look like a sedan, so never mind, I'll just use the photo anyway. Cool. Um, so after it generates the estimate, okay, let's say I react negatively to this and say, oh, it's too expensive. Okay, so it uses sentiment analysis to detect in the background that um, you can detect how positively the user reacted to something. So it detects um, using text analysis that my reaction was not very positive. So it quickly passes it to a real human to do some damage control. Okay, so this is what the Bing business bot looks like. And then, all right, so remember how I said you could write once and then run everywhere? So you can actually write cool attachments like this inside the bot. And sometimes the attachments look similar. So for example, the thumbnail looks like um, the same attachment. So there's buttons and then there's a picture and there's a card. So the bot connector automatically helps you uh, transpose or translate the code across the different channels, which is pretty convenient. Okay, so we have something cool called adaptive cards. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, uh, adaptive cards only works with the web chat version. Uh, it doesn't really, it doesn't, isn't quite compatible with Facebook Messenger at the moment. It's coming to Skype. But if you are thinking of using your bot, um, putting your bot in a website, then it's going to work well. So uh, you can see this over here. Let's go to samples. Okay. Um, so let's say we go to calendar reminder. So you can actually do some really custom stuff, like select 30 minutes and then snooze. Or you can go to a food order. 
and then select um, maybe I prefer my steak medium rare so this um, only works with the web chat uh, at the moment it's coming to Skype soon but it's it's pretty nifty as you can see you can kind of design it in many ways so your stock update can look something like this it's like custom forms in your bot yeah and then you can integrate this inside the chat bot of course so that's an example of adaptive cards um, so I demoed this earlier uh, the developer portal okay come with services so I think uh, there'll be a webinar later on with Udra and he'll go more in depth into this but basically um, there's five different buckets of cognitive services that we have. So the things like um, computer vision API, speech to text API, language understanding, all of those are part of our cognitive services API family. Uh, so you should go check out the website if you want to. Um, just type in micro Microsoft cognitive services and um, you can see the different services that you can use to make your bot even smarter. Okay, I already demoed that. Okay, so what's the benefits of um, using the bot framework? So for developers, um, it's really fast to develop with because um, you just write the logic once and you can deploy it to many channels. Uh, you can reach a wide audience. There's increasingly, um, there's a lot of people using social media uh, messaging platforms. So like Facebook Messenger, uh, WhatsApp, Telegram. So being able to put your bot on those platforms can really help you grow your outreach of um, audience. And then uh, lastly, the bot framework um, actually provides support for saving chat history, showing analytics and saving the user profile. So it's really useful in that aspect. And then what's the benefit for users? Because the bot framework connects to many channels, they don't necessarily have to be on a specific channel to use the bot. Uh, furthermore, you don't have to download an app in order to use these uh, chatbots, so it's pretty convenient. And then lastly, for uh, organizations, so um, bot framework is pretty easy to develop with, so you reduce the amount of development costs needed and it's really fast to go to market with. It's um, flexible in terms of the amount of stuff that you can do. So one issue with using um, you, like UI-based uh, bot building tools is that you lack the flexibility to integrate your own APIs and do what you want. So the bot framework really lets you uh, do this in a very flexible way. And then scalability, so you can really um, scale to as many users as you need. Right, so 2016-2017 has really been um, the year of the bots. You probably have heard it um, in many places. These are examples of uh, larger companies that are all using, um, using our bots. Uh, so I have some cool videos to show, like a cool Capital N bot video to show you, but I'll probably send it through Skype because um, I don't think audio is going to play so I'll send that over Skype. Cool. Um, so yeah, I think that I went through that stuff pretty quickly. But I hope you managed to get an idea of um, the cool things that Bot can do and maybe get some creative ideas as to how you can use it um, in organizations or in the hackathon. Uh, I'll just quickly send you that uh, Capital N Hi, Alyssa. We have a couple of people join in a little late. So um, can you go over the laundry uh, discussion um, fairly quickly just to give uh, the team some, some background on what was done because that is more focused around the PNG business that we're discussing. Yeah, sure. So I'm um, sorry, you want me to go through the laundry bot demo again? Um, I think if we can touch on recording later if needed. Yeah, yeah, sure. 
Okay, so um, I will just restart that. Okay, so demoing the laundry bot for those um, who missed out on looking at this. So um, this is a bot that really helps um, users with laundry needs. Uh, so what you can do is uh, click some buttons just to tell the user what the bot can do. So you can do language understanding like how should I separate my clothes. So you can say um, how to split up my clothes. Let's say we change it up a little bit. Okay, so users see a natural language understanding in the background. And then um, I can say how should I wash my cotton pants? Okay, so it gives you um, clear instructions on how to wash cotton. So cotton being um, what type of material it is, and the intent of the user being finding out uh, how they should wash something. So if I say something like, um, how about... Uh, what other materials are there? Um, I can't remember, but I'll just put what about them then. So based on the context that the user is talking about care instructions, it can sort of understand that the user was talking about care instructions. And I'll just give a different material. So care instructions for denim. And then if I say, yeah, I would like some detergent recommendations. Then it gives me some recommendations for um, denim. So if I say, what about silk? Okay, so it says uh, for silk, I recommend the following. So what about baby clothes? So you can say it recommends this for baby clothes. Uh, so let's say I click on this. So the user can use buttons to find out more about um, the product. So it recommends, tells you why you should buy this. And then if I click on this one, you can actually open another web view for the user to buy, buy it. I think um, Facebook actually has a payment API, so you could potentially let the user shop within your bot using the payment API, which is pretty cool. So let's say, um, say something like, should I wash my clothes today? So it'll give you like a weather forecast on whether you should um, wash it. If you say something like, is it going to rain? It also understands that you're trying to ask for the weather. Um, so I'll just go through the Lewis part again uh, for those who missed it. Uh, the language understanding part is actually all happening here in the background. So what you do is uh, add a couple of intents and then train each of the intents. So for example, the separation intent, there's like different ways that you, the user can ask about separation. So I've trained the bot to understand the different ways that the user could ask. Um, so let's say check weather. So these are the different ways the user kind of um, asks about uh, checking the weather. So this doesn't have to be exactly how the user asks. So for example, if you train it, should I wash stuff today? And the user say, says, should I wash my stuff later on? It'll still be smart enough to, uh, to sort of understand that the user is checking the weather. So it doesn't have to be exact. It just has to be like roughly what the user would say, which is pretty smart. And then under entities, you can see that um, I've created an entity called clothing um, and clothing has a material and has a type. So for example, how do you wash a specific material? How do I wash my jeans? Jeans is a type. So jeans should match to denim. Yeah, you can see that it intelligently does like classification of materials, types, and intents. Um, 
yeah, so, oh, I forgot to demo the Power BI part. So this is the dashboard um, that you could potentially use this as an idea um, to monitor uh, what your users are doing and provide your users with useful analytics. So for example, in the month of August, I spent 171. I did this distribution of uh, wash temperatures, say in May, I spent $1.93 on warm washers, and this is the um, amount of power that I used, cups of laundry used, sorry, detergent used. And then you can actually, um, you can actually export this as a um, iframe and put it in your website as well. So yeah, that's pretty useful. Okay. I guess I'll just answer any questions um, now that we have some time. Okay, can you tell me some use cases in the Asian industry using chatbot? Um, consuming goods companies. Okay, so I can't. Um, I'll, I'll name you some examples of um, like Asian companies using chatbots, but uh, I don't know if any of them are consumer goods. I can't, nothing, none, no consumer goods ones come to mind right now. But for example, on um, Capital Land, so this uh, video that I showed, oh, sorry, it's sent in here, um, give that a watch, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's called the Sparkle Bot and it's a chatbot um, for the retail industry. It gives your users um, recommendations on what they can buy and make restaurant bookings within the shopping mall itself. Um, a, what other Asian companies in Asia are using bots? So we recently um, signed in, oh no, IMDA is actually doing a pilot um, on chatbots uh, using the bot framework. So what their bot does is um, people in Singapore can ask um, information to do with public sector through that bot. Uh, consumer goods companies, not too sure. I mean, I know a lot of uh, globally relevant chatbots like Skyscanner, Expedia, UPS, all of those are using bot framework as well. Uh, could you show us a back an example? Yeah, so, um, okay, so let me just refer to this, this thing again. Okay, so the insurance car example uses the Bot Builder SDK, and then it links to, you know how it did a computer vision of uh, recognizing the dog, recognizing Bill Gates, and then recognizing the car? So all of those actually just call um, the uh, Cognitive Services API. So it calls Speech-to-Text API, it calls Natural Language API, it calls um, Computer Vision API. And then, um, yeah, it, it, uh, it does that and then just tells the user uh, what the objects are or the speech-to-text results. Um, the laundry bot is similar, so they actually call the same Lewis API to understand uh, natural language. And then um, in terms of doing the Power BI integrations, uh, it calls Azure database in the background. So I'm using SQL database in the background, so your bot can just um, save information to a SQL database that you spin up in Azure. And then you can connect the SQL database to Power BI um, so that you can display things like these. Yeah, uh, let me just see. And then um, what you do with the bot code is you deploy it to a Azure app service. It's basically like a web service. And then you use the portal over here to spin up a bot. You can put whatever um, endpoint your chatbot uses. 
and then you can just configure the settings um, as to what channel you want to deploy it to from this uh, portal. Yeah. Yep. Sure. So there's Cortana channel over here. What you do is you click on it. Um, it'll give you all the instructions you need to um, connect it to Cortana. Then you can say, um, yeah, then you can just talk to Cortana over here and link it to your bot. I don't have a demo of that right now, but um, it is possible. I've seen it before. Yeah, you can feed the bot with a bunch of Q&A dialogues. Um, no, it shouldn't be keyword based, but using keywords when you train the bot will always be useful to help it um, understand what the user is saying. So for example, over here, I'm just training him with all the different ways that the user could ask about how to care for their laundry. So you can just, um, yeah, you can just put whatever utterance you want here. And then just go to train and test, train it, and then publish your model over here. Or you can use QNA Maker, yeah. But I, I personally prefer Lewis and it a bit smarter. I can just I can show you QA Maker quickly. This is um you can use QA Maker if your scenario isn't too complex, like um if you don't need any entities, you just need like a straight question and a straight answer, then you can use something like QA Maker. Um, how does QA Maker work? You have a knowledge base. And then you can create a Q&A pair. So you can do something like, um, what is your address? This is XYZ, add a new Q&A pair. Um, what's your company model? Our company model is XYZ, save and retrain. And then you can go into test. And you can go here. Uh, so, so what you can do is um, you will need to train train this. So if you say your address, an alternate way you can say this is where are you or your location, please. And then you just save and retrain it. So this is another way you could do it. Um, the only downside with using something like this is that you can't define entities. So for example, if the user says something like, um, how do you wash cotton? How do you wash um, a skirt? How do you wash jeans? Um, it's more efficient to do something like that using Lewis. Oh yeah, you can also use um, an FAQ page to populate the knowledge base. Um, Do we, do we have a quick example of a FAQ page? I can quickly set that up in q and Maker. Yeah, let me pull one up. Maybe this one.
Does anyone have any other questions? Let's try using this. So you enter your URL. It just crawls this page and tries to extract um, Q&A. Yep. So that's really easy to do and it's really quick. This is all extracted from the web page. And then you can go to test. You have to save and retrain. So you say, um, what was one of the possible questions? Change the domain address. So that's a really quick and easy way to get started. In Chinese. Oh, it's a PNG example. Okay. So how long would it take for somebody to build a bot similar to... NG building similar bots for uh, the different products. Um, sorry, how long will it take to build a bot similar to the laundry one that I demoed? Yeah. Maybe a quick, uh, a faster due to the uh, use of bot framework. So yeah, using bot framework will make it way faster because there's a lot of parts already um, available to you on uh, building dialogues, building prompts, building the cards. Um, upscaling on bot framework um, depends on whether you have development experience, but it's actually, uh, it, it's quite easy to use. I mean, once you get the hang of it, then yeah, you're good to go. But I say to build something like the laundry bot, it took me a week to do. And that was also learning bot framework on the way. So a week, two weeks around there to build the laundry bot. Yeah. Does anyone have any last questions they'd like to ask? Otherwise, I think um, we can end a bit early and save everyone a bit of time. No? Okay. Well, cool. Thanks. Thanks for um, listening. I hope you guys uh, found this useful. Uh, just flick me an email if you have any other questions about um, the bot framework or building bots. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's the fun part, right? Building it. No worries. Thanks, everyone. Hey everyone, um, don't forget to join the other sessions uh, the rest of the week if you um, have the chance at the same um, similar session tomorrow, machine learning today and services.